I could have you out of here by by eleven o'clock <laughs> if nobody argues. <laughs> okay, so the work stream proposals for pillar one. Um, the ones in black, as I said, are the ones that um, that are a continuation of last time around. I'll leave the ones in red till later. But first, the modular journey phase one, where Jane led it. Um, my perception is this: this is to be continued and potentially extend it with a contributor guide with input from Elijah. Um, Jane, what do you think? Is that okay? Uh, definitely needs to be continued. The Elijah and I were just talking about the contributor guide, and we think it is something um, that can be used there, but would actually, Sam would actually need to guide Elijah on where it needs to be stored and what is needed in the contributor guide. Um, so I'm not sure it fits entirely with the roadmap, but okay. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to, to host it there and caretake it there until it finds its natural home. Yeah. Okay, fine. But uh, um, on resourcing, I mean, we are going to carry on with insufficient resource for most of this work stream. Uh, we do need more input from the, the community in this. Definitely, yeah. 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 If possible. Okay. Um, and, and even if it's not time, if people have ideas, if they have pieces of work they want to contribute, you know, we've got this document, we've done this process, we think this would be valuable to include or to help guide something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Any, any contributions, please chat to me. Okay, cool. Um, okay, that's definitely in the next PI. I had, it comes as no surprise at all. Uh, Mini Loop and Tom Daly. Um, I know that the work is continuing. He's, he's been working with, um, with, Paul on the BizOps framework has been talk, working with Miguel quite extensively on upgrading it to Mojo V15. Tom, is there anything you want to say on that? I assume you're in the room. Hang on, hang on, Mike. Yes, you get a microphone. <clears throat> oh, okay, thanks. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, no, all of that. Um, it's already got the, if you pull the V5.0 uh, branch today, it's got options for third party for the bulk API with all the TTK tests for those. And it installs the BOF, uh, but uh, Paul and I have a session planned for this afternoon where he's going to help me uh, to configure it and then start to write some user docs and some some stories so that we tell people how to, to use that and get familiar with it so they can start looking at what's going on inside the hub. So that's the plan there. And it's But you can pull five, uh, branch 5.0 in the mini loop repo today and start playing around with it already. It, 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 it runs against the release candidate. Okay. But there's still work to be done, most definitely. Um, so, yeah. That's to me as a continuing stream. Yep. Uh, next one was fraud FRMS. FRMS. Um, Greg, I don't know what you think about this. Is this complete? Is this something you, you need need to do more work on during the next PI, or are you are you simply waiting for somebody to want to do a proof of concept? Or... Yeah, we're. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So. Um... We're, we're complete as, as far as things are concerned right now. We're waiting for people to actually do implementations. We have a lot of items in, in the backlog, but until we do our next code review, which will be shortly here, um, we really don't know where to prioritize things on. And the field okay, so we have field tests going on with BankServe and JOPAC right now. Yeah. So for now, we can regard that as, from our perspective as the Mojo Foundation, we can regard that as complete, is how I take that. Uh, yeah, I would, yeah. 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 I understand you as the FRMS program, you're continually developing, but it's not really focused on Mojo Loop. We don't need to worry about it. The, 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 the PPA adapter has been done. It's been thoroughly yeah. tested. Um, yeah, that's that solid code has been since November. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, next one is Azure. Um, Azure deployments. Um, uh, so far as I know, all that's, all that's needed to that on that is to keep it um, 
up to date, um, make sure it, it incorporates V15, etc. Um, Tom, is this a significant work stream, do you think, for the next PI? I, I think it's significant in, in um, uh, <clears throat> democratizing access and giving a more yeah, of course, of course. That's why it's version. here at all. I mean, uh, but there's not a lot of, but there's not a lot of work. There's, yeah. there's not a huge amount of work. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and and uh, yeah. still waiting for some feedback from Jason on. But yeah, it's he's just got to open source that, and then really, there's not a lot of work after that for V15. V15 yeah. really helps this project too. By the way, uh, Spruik for for the work that guys have done, uh, that we've done on V15 because it really helps. Uh, deploy and maintain and operations. Okay, that's great. Now, when I, when I was saying significant, I meant in terms of effort rather than its importance, because all these things are important. Um, next, so essentially, I'm seeing that uh, uh, apart from the first one, things are extensively moving into almost a maintenance mode. So that frees up some of our bandwidth for other efforts. Um, uh, next one is fintech sandbox and Sam. Sam, you've done the technical work around this, but there is there is talk that this needs more work around defining the rules of usage. Um, is that something you're willing to take on in the next in the next PI? I don't see Sam in the room. Can we skip that for now? In the room. Yeah. Okay, I can take um, that. Let's skip that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So there are the the uh, existing work streams, and now we have um, two new ones. Um, first of all, Paul Baker is he in the room? Yeah, I can see him. Can you talk about what yes. you want to do with TTK? Because um, all I heard was we need a TTK work stream. What's it for? Hello. Uh, okay. Hello. Mike's working. Hello. Um, yes. Uh, so th there's a couple of things that I think would, uh, I think that TTK is a really important tool in our community at the moment. Yep. So uh, continuous ongoing work on it, I think, makes sense anyway. Um, but particularly, I think we should be trying to generalize some of the concepts. I, I, uh, and the um, and the reason for that then it allows us to be able to use it as a digital public goods because I think it could benefit uh, uh, the collaboration between um, the, the, the the different open source entities. Um, uh, but there are things that we can do. So uh, this generalizing action could also help us make it a better testing facility. Um, so it could make it a, 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 a easier to configure. It could make um, it a, easier to set up or more flexible in how you assign your certs. Uh, for instance, with uh, vNext architecture, it's got a pluggable uh, sort of backend. So it would be nice to be able to have um, different assert aspects that could, so we could have the same test set being called from the front and potentially um, uh, assert modules that are plugging into Kafka or memory stream or, or some of the different uh, backend architectures. So, so sort of a, a pluggable assert action component would, would take this a long way to making it uh, more generalizable, but would also make it uh, easier to configure in uh, and be used uh, uh, sort of as a more in-depth tester. Um, uh, and there's other things we can do as well, like the, the, the make it easier to use by uh, using the open tracing headers uh, to trigger the correct um, mock rules response. Mm -hmm. and, and that just makes it so much easier to, to set up and configure and more intuitive. So, so, so there's a there's a list of four or five things that it, that improve it as a testing engine, and then on the other side we got it as a POC. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we could make it better. We could refactor some of that UI. So what we often do is we customize that UI and make it look like a bank or make it look like something else. Well, why not take it one step further and have 
a pluggable micro front end so you could actually build something that looks real for your particular application and then plug it straight into that that ui component in, in a fairly seamless way and and then get get the advantage of that ui then triggering your back-end test uh, or or getting those callback responses with then the in-between states which would be your sequence diagrams and 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 uh and your settlement models uh, state views and things like that so so let, let's take what's there as as a sort of an education poc tool and and just add in some nice pretty front ends on the side to, to help explain it um uh, so th th there's a uh, so, so that's one aspect of it as a POC, but there's another one as well, and that is um, uh, what about how we configure it as a dev test harness, <laughs> you know, um, uh, and make it more available to test some of our other components. We've got a, a fairly very generalized test harness for Mojuloop, uh, but there's much more to Mojuloop than just the core. Uh, sorry, it, I, I didn't say Mojuloop core. Uh, there are lots of other aspects. And, and it would be really nice to be able to sort of finish out that test harness so that we could yeah. um, we, we could really facilitate adoption in those other aspects of, of Modulip as well. Um, but, but we should do it as a need by a need basis. So if someone has a need, we, we should help maybe build those sets of uh, test harnesses. So that's my thinking on this work stream. Um, yeah. Uh, you, have you, a, you, have, you clearly have. You clearly have quite a quite a big vision for this, um, and I can see it having huge value, not just for the Mojo Tech community, but the whole G2P Connect program would love this most definitely. Um, yeah, our work with with Mifos and with um, Mosit would really benefit from that. So yeah, um, I would support this definitely, but um, we probably need to do some more in depth planning on that. Um, so thank you, Paul. I agree completely. I mean, at the moment, this is just a, um, a personal passion or vision because I just recognize how much it's helped our team. Um, and I would like that to help others too. And, and it has so far. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, the last one that I have on here is support for on-prem. I put this as a new thing, but it's not actually new. It's been going on for, going on for quite some time. And it will would be led by David Fry. Um, I don't know what David would have to do about this. I don't think he's in the room. I think he was he was joining online. So um, we probably need to discuss that with him separately. Um, so um, I think that that's something that we should be doing anyway. There's huge calls for to do, doing on-prem. In fact, in many cases, we hear from Africa Nenda that um, on-prem is actually the first port of call and cloud may come later, as opposed to our expectation of cloud first, on-prem later. So we really need to have an on-prem solution in place. And David Fry has been working on that for some time. And I would propose that he continues that, that process. Um, does anyone have any other comment on that? No. Nope. Okay, I think you can go ahead, Paul. Okay, fine. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to get into um, the mirror boards now. We'll leave that till later when we've gone through all of these, I think. Um, so that was our timeline for the PI20, the previous PI, and we need to be updating that for um, PI21. And we'll come to that later um, after we've done some more investigation on these um, proposals. So moving on to pillar two, there's actually nothing new being proposed in pillar two. This is the um, the value add um, pillar. So um, one thing I would say about this is um, uh, the PISP uh, stuff. Paul, Michael's, Paul, Michael's hand is up. Cool, Michael. Oh, sorry, I, I thought I had said, but uh, maybe not that I think we should have a work stream for three PPI extensions, uh, which I guess it belongs in pillar two. 
Okay, sorry, I missed that one. No, it's okay. Uh, I mean, did, I, assume, I assumed you meant the PISP merchant request to pay. Well, I think uh, we would like to look in general, but we as a community, I think, need to look in general at what needs to happen to the interfaces and to the uh, potentially to the switch code uh, to support the kinds of things that uh, fintechs in general will want to do, which, I mean, in my mind, is not limited uh, to merchant request to pay. Yeah, um, I think I, I'm sure we have yeah, a you meeting. are, of course, correct on that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we have a meeting scheduled this afternoon to talk through some of the options. Um, and I would like a work stream in here that says we need more support for third parties. OK, that works for me. I'll add that in. Um, um, Paul, one second. Uh, Sam is back in the room. Do you want to go back to pillar one? That's sure. Good... Yeah. Okay. Uh, the fintech sandbox, uh, Sam. Yep. Sam, you were much missed. Fintech sandbox. Are you... Hi, Paul. Yeah. Hi. You've done a lot of the technical work on deploying the fintech sandbox, sandbox and making it operational, but there is this question that's come up about needing some um, rules of rules of engagement for the fintech sandbox. How we how we onboard people to the sandbox. How long they stay there how many people can be on at the same time uh, how people leave the sandbox all of that kind of thing and it's been suggested that you'd be the ideal person to at least draft those rules um so that the community can then agree those rules would you be willing to take that on thank you paul uh, can i uh, speak for a couple of minutes please Okay, thank you. So uh, I think in the discussions and in the meetings that happened this week, we, we saw how powerful it was for everyone to be able to run a P2P demo, a, module, a version of module, whether it is a mini loop or Azure or a TTK or go test harness or the real module sandbox deployed by IAC. So I think, uh, sorry for missing this earlier, but I was going to advocate for uh, continuing this work stream. It, seeing it in black, it looks like it already is. But I think there are a few things we need here. Um, in the conversations uh, that happened, what we are, what I understood is that people are looking for even a simpler version of Mojulu, even if we don't care what's running in the background. Mm -hmm. Having like a, a thing that is open for everybody, like how we had uh, the third party running, like Lewis set up a sandbox.mojulu.io, where yeah. anyone can go and try a couple of requests. It's a controlled environment. But seeing how the third party functionality work is, is very powerful. And I think it meets a lot of need and use case. Oh, good. I've just lost you all. Yeah, looks like it's down. Platform again. and oh. it is very. He's back. It, it, it... Sorry, Kim. Sorry, I lost you for, uh, for about 20 seconds. So. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was saying, uh, even if we, even if some of the users don't really uh, know or very particular about what's running in the background, whether it's a testing toolkit or a mini loop or a simulated environment, uh, running the basic use cases very, is very powerful. So I think we need to look at a couple of things. Uh, how do we get that accessible, like a free version that anyone can use, a control environment that people can run? And obviously, there is uh, still room for more advanced stuff like fintechs. For example, there is a, a technical operations team who wants to get their hands on or an implementation team or an SI that they are now seeing with Rwanda, with Orion Systems and Widen. Uh, there is still room for uh, a fintech sandbox deployed with IC, which has the security and all the, the finance portal and everything. But maybe that's that comes at a more advanced stage. So I think these kind of discussions and, and documentation needs to happen. And I also agree with the rules to create that yeah, uh, yeah. closed environment where we can uh, demonstrate this. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, you touched on some elements of pillar two there as well, um, which is great because we were just we were just discussing this. And Michael was making the point that we do need more work on three PPI, potential extensions, um, decide how fintechs are going to use it. And maybe and review what code changes might be needed to support those usages. Is that something you'd be willing to work with, Sam? Yes, I'm. I'm very 
invested in three PPIs. You know, I mean, we took a, yep. a small uh, a small pause there, but uh, that's why I, I, was I also totally like what, what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Okay, fine. I'll update this slide for pillar two to include that. Have you uh, moved on from pillar one? Uh, yeah, we have moved on from pillar one. You, okay. You were, um, we are racing through some. My aim is to get okay, you all okay. back by eleven o'clock. Okay. Is there a, <laughs> a new, Can you go back to for the list to the list of extremes if I can take that liberty, Paul? Pillar one. There we are. Modulo Jenny Milu for. Um, So can I propose a work stream here for? Uh, of course, I don't know if you it can, comes out of module. Sorry, Paul. Of course, you can, Sam. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it comes under any of the existing uh, streams. Please let me know if so. But I think there is a, what we are seeing here, like on the first day at CC Hub, and in the room here, and and in some of the previous events, we had a lot of new contributors, students who are interested, or or even otherwise people in different stages in life. Sorry. Yeah, which one? Contributor guide. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't know if it is comes under that, but what I'm thinking of is is more like a, an active work stream with all this group of people who helped train them. Like having that, I, yeah, if, if it comes under that, great. But I think so it would be good to support, A contributor support network. Um, correct. It, yeah. Yeah. So, which which helps them like uh, uh, maybe even regularly. I mean, we need to come up with the details, but maybe biweekly meetings, helping them walk through uh, the MTP programs, contributor guides, like how we saw the journey described by Elijah the other day. Uh, I, I think we can scale that. Um, I have a, I have an idea on that. Would would that something be better done initially within the foundation, um, with a few people? Then maybe in the next PI we can flesh it out into a work stream. Sure. Because yeah. there's already some work in that regard. As long as it is covered, that, okay. that's all. All right. Thank you. Thanks for uh, giving me that chance. Okay. Uh, thanks, Sam, and thanks, Simeon. Uh, is that something that could be hosted through your um, community portal as well, Simeon? That's yes. Um, yeah. I think we'll publish we'll publish what's going on um, and maybe call for feedback. Yeah. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, moving on. Yes, uh, this is going to be supplemented by three PPI extensions work stream, which will be led by Sam. Um, Sam's previous merchant request to pay uh, merchant payment work stream is going to be merged with the merchant registration work stream to just be a pure merchant payments work stream. Uh, the merchant payments work stream will be um, supporting not just QR, but USSD, um, obviously 3PPI um, variants of merchant payments, which are extremely important in, in some markets, and all of the other variants thereof. I'll come back to bulk in a minute. But first, um, I think it's quite clear that this is an important work stream. It, because it's a value add work stream, all the effort tends to be pulled away from it to deal with the the um, immediate needs of pillars one and three and quality product. So we do need more resourcing here. So we're looking to the community to nominate a work stream lead here for merchant registration and um, and uh, also to um, devote some resources to this. I mean, I can provide support. I can I can define requirements, etc. But we do need somebody with the with the capacity um, to lead this. Actually, extremely important. It may well become a a flagship work stream. So uh, we need somebody with the time and the commitment to motion to actually lead this work stream. Is there anyone in the room who could who would would be able to commit to uh, working on this? Uh, I see Karim's hand up. Yeah, sure. I can volunteer for this. Uh, I've been working on this person to merchant payments recently in an instant payment implementation. So have a fair good idea of uh, QR payments and uh, how we can implement this. Okay, cool. Good. Uh, 
that that's very helpful um you can't do it on your own though we'd be seeking working for uh seeking other people to participate in this uh work stream as well so uh, uh maybe paul, um knees hands is, is up so i'll give me uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, Ni here. Um, we will also participate in this work stream, uh, not as a lead, but uh, to participate and contribute uh, to this important work. Thank you. That's great. So thank you. Ni's commitment and Karima's uh, work stream lead. Karima's um, work stream lead. There is another hand, Pedro. I just wanted to say one thing. I'm not going to work on this, but uh, as a reminder, we had the government of Rwanda stand up saying this is a priority. All the Rwandans in the room. You heard him. I think you should be joining this work stream. Yeah, I, I would definitely Can agree. I, Pedro, go first, then I'll pass it. To I, and yeah, and if if this is something that is not needed right away, then I'll, I'd welcome the opportunity to provide um, some support at the V next stage to to go with this. Um, I welcome your I welcome your support, Pedro. But I really need you to focus on V next. We really need V next out there. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, uh, there are a few hands. Um, let Elaine go first and then Ed after. Yeah, so uh, before uh, Steve uh, put his hands up, I was going to volunteer us uh, wired in as well. So you've got wired in, um, Ed? Yeah, I, I've discussed with Kareem as well. So, Mifos, we're going to try to support those merchant efforts too. Hey, look at that. Excellent. So you've got uh, Thetzalworks, you've got Kareem, uh, I think that's Basis, you've got Wired in, you've got Mifos. I think we've got, else? We've got the makings of yeah. a work stream here. That, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, you've got so, one more hand here. Sure. Uh, Olivia Manzi, um, I think I need to, as we discussed it for two years ago, uh, I still, I'm still interested in participating very actively on this. Thank you. Okay, right. We've got Olivia. That's really good news. We've got Kareem as lead. We've got uh, Ni and Vista Works. We've got Wide In, Mifos, and we've got uh, Olivia Manzi. Um, I think we've got the basis of an extremely healthy work stream there. So I'd like to thank you all for that. And I'll be in touch to, well, we're going to have a, a breakout session where hopefully you guys will be able to talk together and. Um, uh, and uh, start making some plans there um, after this presentation. Um, okay, that's great. Um, we'll leave that discussion for now. But yep, great. Thank you for the for the engagement. That's really really good news. Um, the last one in pillar two here is bulk. Um, Paul, um, can you tell me what the status is? Do you need to do any more work on bulk, or do you regard this as a, as complete now? And I'm thinking also of bulk via three PPI. Uh, yeah, I don't think we quite finished on bulk. Um, uh, I, I I still think we in that. Um, let's evaluate what we've got in place stage. Mm -hmm. um, and to identify what's the most important to move forward, because we've got a long list of things on, on the backlog. And so I think uh, uh, getting adopters or other people to try out what's there and use what's there, and then we can understand uh, more clearly what what is uh, uh, the, the next steps that we should be working on. But um, this should be a community effort. You know, I would love to see other people in the community uh, sort of volunteering to come help uh, build some of these things and and if they feel uh, that you know if we do prioritize some of these features and and they're willing to put in some effort to to help us uh, sort of move this effort forward because this is a very important use case um, I agree uh, that would I agree. be fantastic yeah, yeah. Um, and sorry to put somebody on the spot here but um, Mifos Ed are you, would you be willing to perhaps try um, in, integrating with uh, the bulk interface that Paul's been work, Paul and his team have been working on for so long, and maybe try it out with an eye towards G2P Connect? Yeah, Paul. I think like Kareem and I, as part of the efforts we're doing with GovStack as well as G2P Connect, we'll try yeah. to better align those and explore utilization of the bulk APIs. So, 
Yep. Okay, that would be thanks really for the good. suggestion. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Thanks. Ed. That's great. Um, uh, Paul, you have you have a potential um, a potential test user there then. So great. But uh, it'd be good if some of the other um, deployments could also also be experimenting with it. And I know that uh, Litsa Works have been looking at bulk. Um, perhaps that they will, in an extraordinarily busy schedule, find some time for this. But I won't. I'm not going to put anyone on the spot. Me. So, thank you all. That's really good. Um, okay. Again, that was the timeline for PI20. We'll we'll do this again for um, PI21. Paul, uh, Paul, there's a question from Elaine. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Paul. Um, so on the what else? Uh, I was interested to know. Uh, sorry, how far I should have said to... what else. Yes, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, just waiting on that one. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I was interested to know how far we were with the ISO connect ISO two hundred twenty two connector, since this is, uh, in my opinion, one critical part that uh, is going to be needed at least for the random deployment. Yeah, um, strictly and speaking, if, uh, uh, is, uh, if you need relevant. someone to, yeah, sorry, and if uh, you needed someone to uh, jump on that and lend a hand, uh, we would be interested as well. Before we, uh, Michael, please, before we leave that subject, Michael, please jump in. Um, having bitten Jason's arm off at the last uh, PI, I'm now going to bite Alain's arm off. Yeah, fantastic. We are definitely going to want to start putting, um, yeah, putting. I mean, we got some material already, uh, so we could start doing some uh, payment manager type stuff quite quickly. Uh, you and I, and probably some people from RISA, will need to talk through exactly how it's going to look. Uh, but one of the things that I really hope will happen is that we'll be in a position to, as it were, have a draft. Uh, ISO 20022 interface in advance of <clears throat> getting formal approval from the ISO organization, uh, which might take a week or two. So let's talk. It's in pillar three. It is pillar three, but still, Alan, what brought it up now, so we should address it now. So that's good news. Thank you. Uh, and with that, we'll go straight to pillar three. Um, these are the um, the work streams from the previous PI in black. So Interledger updates. Now, Michael, um, there's a few for you to talk about here. So do you want to talk about Interledger? And do you want to say anything beyond what's already been said about ISO 222? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Um, yeah. So as, as regards Interledger updates, um, I think I'm going to channel my inner carpenters and say, we've only just begun. Yeah. Uh, there you say. Everybody over a certain age in the room chuckled there. Everybody under a certain age is thinking, sorry. Yep. Um, sorry, what do you want to put? <laughs> exactly. Um, so yes, uh, we've started, uh, we've got a use case, uh, which again, as you saw yesterday, we started to work on a demonstrator, uh, but I think there's still quite a lot of work to do to make sure that uh, particularly Rafiki uh, and Mojaloop are playing as nicely as they possibly can with each other. Uh, so I think with uh, Chris and ILF's uh, support, we will be able to continue doing that. And I imagine, I'm not sure whether the uh, People's Clearinghouse people are here yet, uh, but I think they are strongly committed to working on an initial implementation of that. But anybody else who is interested in uh, connecting uh, ILF institute or ILF based institutions to Mojaloop networks, we'd be very happy to work with. So the focus on in this work stream is really effectively a cross network provider into Interledger um, yep. and developing some sort of proof of concept with that. Is that, is yeah, that a first inbound. point? So we, yeah, inbound. we haven't really started, yeah, we haven't really started thinking about outbound yet, uh, but that's another area where we're going to have to do some work. I, the, the first uh, instance that we have, the Mexican instance, uh, it will be inbound only because we don't have a yeah. way of settling outbound. 
Um, but obviously, you know, if we're going to make this something that's generally available, it's got to handle outbound from Mojo Loop as well as inbound to Mojo Loop. But outbound is out of scope for the moment. Yeah, I say? mean it's a lower priority case because we don't have an actual uh, an actual implementation need yeah. at the moment. Fair enough. Um, and on ISO, so, yes. On ISO, uh, well, you know, to some extent, we are in the hands of the ISO organization here, but uh, I want to, uh, as I said, I take up Alain's offer and say, we need to be working on parallel on this uh, so that we make sure, first of all, that we are saying to the ISO organization, uh, whatever we need to say about the wider community and not just about Mojo Loop in, in terms yeah. of what the messages need to be like, um, but also, uh, we need parallel work streams, I think, first of all, to look at how we could consume um, ISO 2002 messages, well, ISO 2002 messages, uh, and second, uh, to look at building uh, an adapter that will, con will uh, consume ISO messages coming in from outside and work with the existing system. So it's a CMA plus further standardization work. CNP, sorry. sorry, CNP. Why did I yes. say CNP? Sorry. I don't know. CNP plus the um, thought, uh, yeah. kind of standardization work. Yeah. And also, of course, anybody who is uh, able to give time and effort to talk about the wider community requirements for uh, an ISO 2002 interface that's going to be usable in emerging economies as well as by large Western banks uh, will be very welcome and uh, yeah. very useful. I was disturbed by in your presentation the other day, whenever it was, uh, when you were talking about the fact that all the reviewers... Seems like only yesterday, doesn't it? Feels like last week sometime. <laughs> um, there's... Yes. Uh, uh, all the reviewers are essentially from the conventional banking world, nobody with an IPS. So that's, that's because everybody case. in the ISO organization is from there. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So we need to we need to bring new blood in. And the evaluation team is an opportunity to bring in new blood because you don't need to be a member of the ISO organization to belong to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you. Hey, good man. Sorry, Sorry. I couldn't just just background. volunteered. Did he? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Perfect. Um, uh, one second. Comment from me. Yeah, just the uh, <coughs> the previous mock stream uh, regarding IntelliJ updates. Uh, we also volunteer to participate in that. Thank you. Awesome. So, um, me and Tito Rex volunteering for IntelliJ, right? Yeah. Yes, IntelliJ. Uh, Good. Good. Thank you, Ni. Um, then there was this work stream last time on international payments addressing, where we didn't actually achieve anything for one reason or another. Um, but we had a presentation from RNJ on day two, day one, whichever it was, where he was talking about international payments addressing and all the work that he's been involved in on that. So. Um, is there anyone in the room who wants to speak to this? Or should I just approach Aranjay and say, can you be a work stream lead on this? What's the feeling of the room? Uh, Steve and Michael. Okay. Steve, do you want to go first? Yeah. The only thing I want to say is on, if I can focus us, Arunjay mentioned that you, that UNCDF and is leading a number of schemes to do a POC in the coming months. Uh, yeah. And I think that's what this work stream should focus on is, is the participation in that POC. Michael? Okay. Uh, yes, so I, I, I would certainly support approaching Aranjay and asking him if he would like to, re, to lead this work stream and indeed merging the work that we're doing here with the work that, uh, that he's doing, that um, yeah, UNCDF are doing. Um, it's, this isn't something that we're going to be able to manage on our own. It's something that's got to be done by a much wider community. I think we've got a lot to contribute, uh, particularly in the technical area. Um, but it would certainly be uh, 
uh, how should I say, a detrimental solution if we wound up with our own solution and it turned out not to be properly aligned with what everybody else was doing. Okay, great. Um, there's a comment from Sam. Paul, if I, if I can add, uh, in the later work stream about GTP Connect, where it lists you as uh, the work stream lead, yeah. while you always say you don't want to lead the work stream, but, but you're saying you'll continue. So anyway, so if we can tie those together where we talk about the identity side of things from MOSIP integration, and if there is a, like any overlap with the payments addressing, uh, I'd like to help with that. Okay, Sorry, cool. Sam, you're proposing a merge between the payments addressing and which one? Uh, the G2P Connect most G2P integration. Connect most yeah. Third one from bottom. Is that, is that val yeah. valid because the, the G2P, G2P Connect? No, no, it's or... not about G2P Connect, just the MOSIP integration, the identity. Yeah, yeah. Paul, can I argue against Sam while I'm standing next to him and you're on the other side of the planet? Please, you know exactly what I'm going to say here, um, um, Steve, so please go and say it. Go on. So I would prefer that that MOSIP discussion got brought into a number of work streams, including Merchant. Um, and then I would prefer that the, the work on bulk would actually be closer to the G2P Connect. So I'd actually say let's get bulk into G2P Connect and let's get MOSIP actually out and into the other work streams as well. So that's my thoughts on that, Paul. I agree with you. Okay. Paul, what were you going to suggest? Exactly that. Okay, cool. We're all aligned. Yeah. Sorry, I think there's going to be a lot of, in, well, uh, some uh, overlap between these work streams because it's something, for instance, that we will need to look at for the ILP connect connectivity as well as we look at a world in which many uh, Rafiki institutions can be talking to many Mojo loops. Uh, we're going to have to have some standard means of uh, deriving the payment pointers to be addressed and those kinds of things. Um, that's an area that we obviously haven't had to think about at the moment because we're just talking about uh, at least many Rafiki instances, but they're only talking to one Mojo loop. Uh, but so that's probably a way of saying the international payments addressing work stream will be a focus rather than something which is uh, just delivering on its own. Yeah. I do tend to view the international payments addressing thing is an, an essential item that we need to work with. And Michael, your point about um, uh, the need to work with international initiatives is exactly right. So I think we have the right approach there. But in terms of MOSIP, that's about national deployments and and um, the need to be able to support, um, uh, uh, for example, open G2P and similar programs. And I think it is a separate use case, so we need to have a different work stream for it. Um, uh, Paul, Paul yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. What I hear currently is there's still an agreement on um, approaching RNJ about leading this work stream. Yep. Are we still at that point? Yep, we are still. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, settlement. Um, Jason, what do you think? Uh, what what further work is required? Yeah. So as mentioned yesterday, I just think we need to uh, definitely review everything that has been done up until now, and it's a, a process of just refining and improving on on what we've got. And uh, yeah, I, I suppose a push to to, to get uh, a working settlement as uh, yeah push for a working settlement as, as far as possible and once we have that we uh it would be good if in conjunction we can we can start with the central ledger and uh the update of the actual uh participant accounts the the, the liquidity accounts i think yeah. it's still an item of of importance yeah yes yeah i'd agree i'd agree so, um and at what point, Jason, do you think within this PI you'll be ready to integrate it with um, Core Mojo Loop? I, I hope so. Yes, and if, especially if there's uh, uh, if, if there's a possibility of more contributors, I would say absolutely. But uh, yeah, I'm a very I, I always lean more toward the optimistic side. So I would say, yeah, I, I would really like for us to push to achieve that definitely. Like I'm not going to make an absolute promise, but I, okay. yeah, I think it's possible. Can I okay. just add something to that? 
Yeah, please, Michael. Uh, I'll come mind, to you next. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. In my mind, there are really three things that we need to be thinking about here. The first thing, and it's absolutely right that we should be concentrating on that now, is the work that Jason's doing implementing the new version of settlement uh, for uh, the current uh, central ledger. And also, we hope, uh, to be able to fit it into the vNext architecture as well. Uh, the second of those is a question that we've opened and sort of left open for quite a long time now, which is whether Mojaloop really needs to be offering something more concrete in the area of actual support for settlements rather than just, I'm not going to say ILF's attitude that says settlement happens somewhere else. We're not interested. We don't care. Um, I think one of the things that we see every time people start to implement Mojo loop systems or even think about implementing Mojo loop systems is how do we settle? Uh, and I think we're approaching a point where just saying, well, we produce a settlement matrix and then Bob's your uncle, job done, uh, probably won't be enough. So mm -hmm. that's the second part. The third part is that as we start thinking about uh, cross-network, cross-jurisdiction, about uh, having schemes uh, and institutions talking to each other, we are going to need to have a detailed, I think, and worked out position on what we think that means for settlement and how we would propose uh, we to allow schemes uh, and individual institutions uh, from outside schemes relating to each other, how we would propose to manage settlement in that context. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sounds like there's plenty of work still to do, Jason. Yes, no, no definitely. I don't think we, we, we're done <laughs> just <No>. yet. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Paul, before we move on for settlement, I just want to ask, is, is Julie on the line? Okay, doesn't sound, sounds like we don't have Julie, but uh, I, I just want to remind us that she's the, uh, uh, she was leading settlement for cross-border for us, so I really want to make sure that we align with what she's doing into this work stream. And Michael, I think you and her have talked about everything you just mentioned, so I think she'd, we may make sure we bring part to your end of that if they're not here today. I also want to make a call out in the room and say, are there other people here who are interested in contributing to either of those? Well, actually, of course, Jason already said, if there are people interested in contributing to the concrete work that Jason's already leading, then great. But I also want to say, if there are people who are interested in joining in and contributing to the other two facets, then we would very much like to hear from them too. Anybody? Mansur, sir, I, I'm looking directly at you. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to say quiet, but I think I think I can't anymore. I think, uh, yes, certainly we've got wide experience in the settlement issues, and especially what is also important, we're looking, we're looking ahead now at the level of the continent itself, because we have our Association of African Central Banks, which is looking at different settlement models proposed by uh, some of the uh, providers of the service. And we would certainly be able to contribute and share our views and experiences with, with the group, if that is okay by you. It's more than okay with me. Um, a couple of hands, Karim here. Just one one additional, uh, if I can, can if I can, Paul? Please, please. Can I? Great. Sorry, yeah. I'm being bombarded yes. across every different channel here, trying to juggle between them all. So, please. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Just, just one additional uh, comment, and 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 uh, which you might take on board, is that the, you're already involved in in, in Rwanda now. Uh, Rwanda is one of the member states of Comesa. Mm -hmm. And yep. I think uh, one, when developing the system here, uh, I had already made the point with Steve, is that we, you should look at trying to see how you will interface with the existing RTGS of, of uh, National Bank of Rwanda. And through that, that will assist in terms of cross-border afterwards, because our system, uh, Rwanda is live on our system. It, uh, it's on STP, and we are, we are, we are doing transactions 
Rwanda, Kenya, Uganda, etc. So that could okay. be something of an uh, experience that you might also be useful to you in trying when you drop develop the uh, cross border uh, model that you're looking at. Thank you. That sounds extremely valuable. Um, uh, I, I'd very much encourage um, encourage your um, inclusion in our in our little cross border special interest group and so. Would you be able to do, to contribute to that? Do you think, or engage in that? Uh, we only we only meet once a week, and we are wanting to engage membership. So, would I very much welcome it if you if you could, um, if you could engage in that group? I, I may not be able to contribute on a weekly basis, but I will certainly make sure that I get I I, I participate in the first one, and then as and when required, I'll I'll, I'll try to make sure that. Uh, I'm part of your group, uh, also to 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 assist in your being on the right track, so that uh, once the system is developed, you take all these into account, because we've had huge huge issues concerning settlement uh, by other providers that are, that are that are on board now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, we we would really value your experience here. So yes, we. Um, I, I've, well, either I or Steve will send you an invitation to that group. So thank you. Uh, okay. Paul Karim here. Yeah, uh, Karim. hi. Uh, on the settlement side, uh, I was uh, looking at the model which we are currently following and uh, just building up on what was being said that uh, we recently did an implementation of uh, RTP system, which is integrated with RTGS. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, in real world, uh, there's this challenge now that uh, the, when you open up access of RTP system to non-bank entities like uh, electronic money issuers or uh, payment service providers who do not necessarily have an RTGS account. So how do mm -hmm. we uh, define those relationships between participants? Because these are participants of an instant payment system whose uh, settlements will be sponsored by a bank who is holding their trust account or managing their settlements. So uh, I understand like Moja Loop treats all of these participants as simply participants, but when it those settlements actually have to be reflected in the RTGS, there will be some hierarchy, uh, uh, some consolidation. So the sponsor will also need to know the net positions. Uh, mm -hmm of uh, the sponsored entity in order to re do the settlements in their own books. Um, so I have some like uh, experience, uh, like a set of design on how the settlement hierarchy can be uh, structured. Um, so because that probably as, as we roll out Moja Loop in uh, different countries where we provide access to uh, uh, non-banking entities, uh, who may be regulated, but necessarily do not have uh, liquidity uh, store in the central bank, then yeah. how do you manage that? Yes, that is a very hot issue for us, Karina. It's, it's come up It's come up many times. Um, so, yeah, um, would you uh, uh, yeah, I, I can would you share be prepared to work, done to work that with, would you be prepared to work perhaps with, uh, with Michael and Jason on this whole settlement question? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. You can add me. Yeah, I will do that. Sorry, I just wanted to add to what Karim said is that it touches on something which I think is uh, an issue that we haven't paid enough attention to. Uh, we, of course, as Karim said, we treat all our participants equally, uh, and we've been happy with the idea that uh, non-RTGS participants can use proxy accounts with people who are RTGS yeah, uh, yeah. participants. The consequence of that, of course, is that they will be charged for that service. Yeah. Uh, and that as usual, the poorest institutions wind up paying the most. This is something we need to get round. I mean, I'm not saying I have a solution for it, but it's something we need to think about and get a solution for, I think. Well, we, we have been discussing solutions around that around that many times michael and i think um our group has been circling around a, a few potential solutions but we do need to have some form of um 
regulatory engagement, I think, before we can really drive this forward. Um, this is not the forum for that discussion, I would suggest, um, but we do need to have um, people who are able to engage um, e even with uh, entities such as FATF, to be honest, to provide some guidance on this and also to talk to BIS on the definitions of a financial institution and who may engage in certain practices with the central bank, for example. Um, so yeah, I think this this is maybe quite a long term piece, but yeah, it needs to be resolved because um, it is all biased against the small institutions at the moment, and we do need a way forward on that. We do have an opportunity potentially through the use of CBDC, but even that is restricted in who may hold it, and maybe we need to get uh, to consider um, getting. Uh, switches classified as you know, financial entities as opposed to simply those who provide the plumbing. So there are things that we can do, but we can't do it overnight. So we need to discuss that within our, our, our special interest groups. Hey, Paul, uh, Nhi here. I just Hi, want Nhi. to um, a, offer this our works to also join this works room. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Nhi. The re we've been trying to keep the work stream reasonable, the, um, the cross-border special interest group um, reasonably small because it allows us to have small, uh, very focused um, discussions amongst the small group. So um, I don't, uh, we do need to expand this at this point. So we can talk about that after this meeting. Um, can I, moving sorry, can I? Paul, just add something which is on a slightly different topic, but which the thing you just said reminded me. Uh, and I think we probably want uh, guidance from Paul out here. Uh, one of the things that we might consider for a work stream is CBDC as it affects Modulub. Now, I know we have a center of excellence which is separate from the Modulub Foundation, uh, which mm -hmm. is looking at CBDC in general. But I'm just wondering whether we need to have something that says, what would Modulo like to do with CBDC? Paula? Yeah. Paula? Uh, yeah, well, I would I would say that we'd be, be careful on the semantics here because this, the COE is part of the Modulo Foundation. It may not be part of the Modulo core product, but it's certainly part of the Modulo Foundation. And um, what I would rather we, we do is have that conversation with Paul, who's leading use case discussions right now that overlap with some of the, some of the work streams that we have here um, and see where there might be synergies. But I, so that's kind of where I, we stand right now. But, you know, Paul's been working with Julie and a few other people and you, Michael, um, on those work, on those use cases. And I think that's where to have the conversation. Okay, thank um, you. I'd like I to think, say that uh, working I, I have only been trying to stand in in the absence of anyone else to lead the uh, CBDC Center of Excellence. So we're waiting for somebody to actually take over that role on a more formal basis. So this isn't some sort of empire building power grab from me, I promise you. Just uh, stepping well, in where comment. nobody else bids to tread. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, well, what I want also to emphasize is that at the level of the continent now, uh, several of our central banks are moving into CBDC. So we have probably to take it on board now uh, yeah. as one of the issues that need to be addressed, even at the level of the of the African Association of Central Banks. It is being discussed, and quite a few of our central banks have already amended their legislation uh, so as to accommodate for CBDC. Thank you. Yes. Um... So far as I can see, most of them seem to be focusing on retail CBDC rather than wholesale CBDC. Would you would you agree with that? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Paul, a lot of our focus so far has been on wholesale rather than retail. But uh, I definitely take on board what you're saying and Michael's comment about um, how it impacts uh, or uh, doing some thinking about how it impacts on most of definitely is relevant in the context of retail CBDCs. So, yeah. Uh, may I also probably add, 
CBDC is more important for all our central banks rather than uh, cryptocurrency, which they are just brushing aside. So we have to make to be very careful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I would agree uh, with that. Paul. Paul, we're nine minutes over, so just a check time check. Oh, we've got loads to go yet. Sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, I did say that I'd have you out there by 11 o'clock. I lied. Um, there's a, still some more stuff to do. So um, maybe we could get to the end of this pillar. Yeah, keep going. Keep, keep going, Paul. It's fine. Just one final issue if I, I can raise. Go can ahead. I, just one. Yeah. Uh, I think I think you spoke about a, a cross-border group that that is already in place. I think let's not underplay the uh, spec of AML CFT. I don't think we can. I think it's uh, absolutely core. It is one of the... So maybe it should be incorporated somewhere because otherwise we'll end up with huge, huge issues if we don't address that one. Yeah. Thank you. And as you, as you heard on day one, we, we do have a, a sub work group within that overall work group which is focusing on compliance which is all about aml cft and fraud so yes um and so i take your point to be to be frank with you if we don't address that at the earliest stage then cross-border isn't happening just not happening because we would be shut down within minutes of trying to do anything in that case so yes i, I take on board your comment and the 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 compliance piece is absolutely fundamental to the success of cross border. I completely agree. Um, I'm going to I'm going to rush us along, otherwise we're never going to get through this. Um, so, uh, gosh, okay. Um, on the MOSIP integration, this needs to continue. There is plenty of work still to do. Um, we do have uh, the potential for funding in place for that work. Um, we need work on the oracles, we need work on coordination, we need work on um, to work with MIFOS and uh, the integration in bulk, as, as I mentioned before, but also uh, work with routing via uh, uh, MOSIP tokens. Um, Ed has already offered to um, contribute to that. He, and in fact, he created on the G2P Connect web uh, GitHub, a discussion group on exactly this subject uh, yesterday, and he and I have been engaged on that separately, out of band, as it were. So that that's great. Anyone else who is uh, willing to help on this, and I'm looking to you, Sam, in particular, as a potential contributor, that would be very welcome. Um, but please contact me later. Um, Thumbs up from Sam. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sam. There were two new work streams, and they were both proposed by Michael. So I'm going to ask him to speak as briefly as possible on uh, foreign exchange support and scheme interoperation as to what he means by that. I mean, I think he knows what he means, but I'll let him speak for it. Whatever was it gave you that idea for. <laughs> um, OK, so foreign exchange. Uh, it's an area we've kind of looked at uh, for quite a long time, and we've had reasonably concrete proposals and even, in fact, a candidate API definition. Uh, but we haven't really, it's kind of dropped down the list of priorities. And all I want to say is that if we are looking at schemes that either operate in multiple jurisdictions or connections between different schemes in different jurisdictions, then we're going to need to have uh, a modular way of doing small value payment versus payment currency conversion. Um, so I think I'm saying that this is a work stream that I would like to pick up uh, and at least get to the point where we have uh, an agreed API uh, and something that we can build a demonstrator using TTKs to show it how it would work in a modular context. Okay. Well, this is clearly something that we that we really need. It follows nicely on, in fact, from the settlement work that's that's already going on. So, um, this is something that I've been very supportive of for quite a while now. So, 
uh, I would definitely say we need to do it. Uh, Michael, you're going to lead this one. I take it. Um, what support I'm do you well, so happy ish to? Uh, well, uh, what support do I need? Um, experience or in these areas, uh, people who are experienced in foreign exchange providers, and particularly people who can look at uh, the likely. I mean, one of the problems I think with this is we need to have a solution that will work in the financial world as we find it. There's no point in our designing a solution that nobody wants to implement because they don't see any benefit or any money in it. And that I think squaring that circle is going to be a problem. So anybody, um, anybody who has experience in this area and can contribute uh, will be very useful. We will also, I think, need, uh, not in the first instance, but we'll certainly need people to help with API design, uh, uh, people to help with uh, any code changes that may be required uh, to support this, and potentially at least uh, people to work on building a demonstrator. Okay, I'll, I mean, are we ready for that within the next PI, do you think, or do you need to do the, the design work during this PI and then follow on in for the POC in the following PI? Or do you think we could well, do a lot of design work has already been done? As I say, we have we've had a candidate for an exchange API. Uh, one of the things that Henrik was much too polite to say in the uh, uh, in the change control board discussion yesterday was that uh, I, uh, that discussion has really largely been dropped by me. Um, but I need to pick that up again. So there's a, there's a fair amount of work that says this is how it would work. It's been socialised with some potential implementers, but not very many. Uh, we need, I think, to move forward, which we can do quite quickly, I hope, uh, and do some reality testing uh, proposals, make sure that we think they're viable in the market. But I think that if we do that, and it may be, of course, that having a demonstrator that shows how this would work would help in that discussion, uh, mm -hmm. would help us. So I think we can think about a demonstrator in this PI, depending on, of course, on how much work is eventually required. Okay, cool. So, Can I just uh, one second, Paul? Sorry, one second. Here we go. I wanted to come in. Ah, sorry. Ah. Thank you. J just to support what what has just been said, I think uh, this is becoming an increasingly uh, important issue for us on the continent as a result of COVID. Subsequently, to U Ukraine uh, Russian uh, war now going on. We have a huge, huge issue concerning foreign exchange. And I think uh, any solution that comes up in terms of netting and settlement of, of, of the differences so that we are able to save uh, on this chaos uh, foreign exchange situation would be most welcome. I think if we can also inbuilt in, in that group, when that group is set up, to look at remittances as well, which is a huge, huge chunk of inflows of foreign exchange in, into, into Africa. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I agree. I agree on its importance. Absolutely. Um, for the for the purposes of people who are perhaps not as um, au fait with this subject as as we might be, Michael, can you explain how this differs from the work that's been done, for example, by Vitzerworks in their proof of concept for uh, international uh, transactions? Um, yes, of course. I mean, obviously, the proof of concept that Fitzer Works did was involved currency conversion uh, because it was between different jurisdictions. However, currency conversion is managed by the Visa Direct system that we used as part of the proof of concept, and therefore we didn't need to think about it. Uh, funds just arrived in the target currency, um, yeah. so one of the things that made it a workable proof of concept was the fact that we didn't need to think about foreign exchange, even though we needed to include it. Uh, so that's how that fits together. Thank you, Michael. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay, thank you. And then don't give up the microphone because Michael, you need uh, to talk so about the Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. realize. I want to check one time. Yeah, I think this is also linked. It, 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 it's a quite complex exercise that needs to be carried out. 
because it, it's linked directly also to exchange rate regulations in each of the member states. Exactly. Uh, how, how this happened. And then within regional blocks as well, there are certain, uh, certain flexibilities if you are within a region. But if you are doing, if you can cross border uh, from non uh, community, uh, regional community basis, then there are different different rules and different sets of parameters. So these must must also be built in. And uh, when it comes to foreign exchange, immediately the central bank is involved. So you need you need sure. to find out how how this works out. No, absolutely. No, yeah, no, that, thank you. The problem is, uh, of course, you're out, everything you say is completely right, Monsieur. but. We also need to solve this for the Mochelup community in a way that isn't uh, focused on any particular geography, in a way that anybody can pick up and adapt to their geography, uh, which adds a, an, a layer of uh, complexity that we don't necessarily have to solve for a particular instance, so, as we didn't in the uh, proof of concept. Yeah, but, but you may um, need to you may need to to address that as well. I mean, we we had that presentation from Mexico. I think uh, yesterday, yeah. the Mexico case is totally different from the other cases. How this how it it's it's managed through Fed Reserve, etc. So this may not be this may not be good, good example for the rest. Of no, the I agree completely. Yeah. I mean, we're very lucky with the Mexican example that they have an existing currency conversion channel between central banks already in place. Um, which is great. But as you rightly point out, Mansour, it doesn't help us at all when we start to look at how this is going to happen in other places in the world. So I'm going to say, actually, that uh, I think with Mansour's permission, I shall make him my dreamer. Uh, the dreamer is a term from Mahjong, where a Mahjong player, particularly a rich Mahjong player, will employ a dreamer who is a uh, Mahjong strategist to tell him what to do? Michael's no, making I, 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 a I, massive I'll... statement about his state. <laughs> no, I, I'll be most welcome to, to to assist and be part of it uh, as a dreamer, but also as a realist as well, because ah, I'm on the ground. Even so, dreamers have to wake up, is what you're telling me. I'm on the ground, so I know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to move this along, Paul. Yep, thank you. Um, we do need to move it along. This is taking far longer than I expected, but I could have predicted um, that. Sorry, uh, Paul, we've got a comment from Oliver. Thank you, uh, Paul. Uh, there are some existing uh, settlement arrangement in the regions. Uh, I think you may uh, keep it like that because those ones are agreement between central banks like the case uh, we saw for Mexico yesterday. In Comesa, there is some. In East Africa, there is e East African payment uh, systems, EAPS. So uh, probably the adaptation would be done on those existing regional arrangements. Uh, there's also some on PAPS, Pan-African uh, payment systems. Those are such uh, things we may consider and adaptation be done on th those regional uh, arrangement thank you All right paul okay thank you thank you for that comment um we do need to move on um the next one was another one from michael scheme interoperation michael can you talk about this and in particular explain how it differs from the the work on interledger and iso 222 uh, well, I can try, yes. So the interledger work is about connecting individual institutions with Mojo Loop schemes, providing individual financial institutions a way to send funds to and eventually from Mojo Loop schemes. So that's different. The ISO 2002 work is essentially standardization work where we're trying to uh, bring the requirements that we already have for instant payment system, inclusive instant payment systems in developing economies into the ISO world, which, as we've said, uh, tends to be somewhat focused on Western banks. But it hasn't done anything to do in particular with questions about how schemes connect with each other. There's another set of things which I think is important now and is going to become increasingly important, because when we look around the African content, continent, for instance, we find a situation where there are some schemes which link a number of economies together. There are other 
payment systems which are national in character currently, and there may even be payment systems which are subnational in character. And at some point, I mean, effectively, as far as I can see, there are two alternatives. Either there'll be a massive fight, and in 35 years' time, there'll be a winner, uh, and everybody will belong to it. Or alternatively, we've got to find a way for the existing configurations to interact with each other. Now, that is an important consideration for Mojoloop, I think, not only to be able to connect with other Mojoloop systems, but also to be able to connect with systems which are not Mojoloop systems. Uh, and this work stream is about figuring out how we would plan to do that. And indeed, uh, well, making the changes that will be necessary in order for us to do that. Olivia, I can see you're, uh, you want to say something? Uh, but the virtue of the schemes, how they are designed and uh, the way they make their scheme rules, uh, most of the time uh, they, they are meant to solve a specific need. And uh, they are quite well on what they do. When you go to cross uh, scheme uh, interoperability, unless they are on the same use case, like what we saw on cards, uh, where we see uh, it's easy because they, are, they have the same protocol. Uh, otherwise, even they are, they don't cross. They just allow to co to coexist on the same bank, on the same merchant, but uh, crossing uh, the networks, it's not yet done. But they're on the same use case and they use the same standards. So think of uh, the, this, what we are doing here, Everyone started uh, instant payment systems uh, as silos. There was no really standards. When we came to standards, you saw how a collision, even on technology, um, when some are on JSON, others on ISO 222, others, some other technologies, it's hard. Yeah, it, it is very hard. So. Things which did not happen on quietly uh, people uh, who have homogeneous standards and use the same channels, it's card, POS, and ATM for them. Uh, uh, let's not dream at this point to have um, that interoperability now, yet we are very far apart. So what we can what we can define now is can we define a kind of standard uh, that's a, another body, being level one or someone else, to define something uh, to allow that interoperability? So people who wish to be interoperable uh, follow that standard, and it allows them to interconnect if both but both scheme they wish. Uh, could, could I? Uh, uh, no, I'm not contradicting from what you're saying, but uh, I think, and this is where I personally believe, for example, what is happening in, 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 in Rwanda. Rwanda could be the example. Rwanda is a member of Comesa. Rwanda is a member of the East African community. And Rwanda is res well respected throughout the continent. And now I'm a dreamer now. So my, my, my view is that there is already this type of cross uh, bleeding. If you look at the, we talked about centuries ago about the route from Cape Town to Cairo. It's happening today, right? I'm not saying we're going to, to take that long. So from my point of view, I find Mojo Loop now being that highway that has been created, which is neutral, unless there are hidden things that I, I, I'm not aware of or I haven't seen. But so far, I find Mojo Loop is an, is, is an independent uh, neutral type of platform that is being set up. So I find Mojo Loop as the highway that we're looking at. And once we are able to do that, so we must be able to, dis to, uh, to design that highway that will be able to take anything on board, any traffic around, whichever uh, provider that is there, whichever vendor is there, now we should be able to interlink. And, and this is where I, I think once Rwanda becomes that example of what we want to achieve, it will be easier to do that. And that is more of a dream, but I think it will happen. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, sorry, uh, some of these discussions can be had in the breakout work streams. So allow yes. me to just hold that conversation. Paul, could you please move on in the interest of time? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, I do, do you want to do the um, policy product work streams after the, after the coffee break or go through them now and then coffee uh, break? No, let's go, th let's go through them now. Let's go through them Thank now. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, quality product work stream proposals. Um, the, there are four existing ones. There's Tiger Beetle uh, with uh, with Jason. Um, Jason, do you want to quickly talk about what needs to be done there on Tiger Beetle? Yes, the, the, the final remaining work, uh, we obviously, uh, the settlement will be covered due to the settlement uh, work stream for Tiger Beetle, but the work for central ledger tiger beetle integration still needs to be completed so it is actually uh quite a far way off but that needs to be peer reviewed it needs to be go through the process of uh or team having a look and and all of that so that is actually a, uh, an item on uh my radar for the next pi but that i've been uh too quiet about but uh, obviously due to the settlements it's uh it's been put on the back burner but it's something that needs to come in most definitely uh yeah this part of the pi is coming forward yeah yeah it's clearly something that we need we're going to need it certainly for uh in support of vnex in any case so yeah no, so the vnex fortunately is covered it's it's just the central ledger work that needs to uh yeah be completed on that okay Cool. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving quickly on, Vnext and Pedro. Well, after the astoundingly good news we had yesterday of a, a considerably improved team, I don't think there's any any doubt that this work stream is going ahead, and I'm ex extremely pleased to hear that. Um, so, Pedro, I don't think we even need to discuss it. Just uh, great work and keep it up. Um, Thanks, Paul. Yes, we continue. That's it. Okay, um, on the core team, um, um, Mojo Loop V15 and beyond, Sam and Miguel will continue working on this. Uh, if either of you want to say anything on this, that's fine, but I assume you're just going to carry on with the with the brilliant work you always do. Am I Thank correct? you, Paul. Um, we'd like to carry on, but I'd like to use this time to pitch for another work stream about documentation. So there used to be a work stream or documentation, and uh, if, if you agree, it fits into the quality product. So there has been quite a few issues that Tom Daly has been raising on documenting the standards, the release process, and uh, fixing some issues with documentation. So previously, when we had a documentation work stream, uh, they kind of did great work, but uh, 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 there are still more things that, that are yet to be done. So right. I think we need that documentation work stream, even if it's not like heavyweight like the others. Uh, that will definitely help with the quality product, is my thinking. You don't view that as part of this um, core work stream that we already have? I, I would like to, yeah, separate those out. If, separate if them that's out. Okay. okay. And yeah. um, would, you, would you be working on that? Would anyone else be doing it? If I'm, I'm happy to be part of the team. If anyone else wants to lead, lead it, that's fine. If there are no takers, I'll, I can put my name there. Would would it um, would Miguel be involved in that? Uh, yeah, yeah, Miguel will have to be part of that. I think Tom will yeah. be part of that. Essentially, it's ties to all the recent uh, updates and happenings in DA and other places. So it'd be good to recognize that as an official work stream and yeah, continue that work. Yeah. Tom, anything great. you want? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll help. Um, that's great. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks, that's Paul. great. Uh, clarification, um, is documentation a separate work stream or are you adding it into the V15 core team? New work stream. New work stream, all right. Okay. And I am writing down what everyone says, so I will be holding you to it. So, um, Mojo Platform Quality and Security. Um, Godfrey, um, I presume this work will continue. Um, I don't think we need to say more on that. And then we have a new proposal for an alternative multi-cloud native deployment tool. We have um, IAC as our primary deployment tool at the moment. It's, uh, we have Mojloop as the core platform and IAC as the deployment tool. 
We do have others, though. We have uh, obviously we have Miniloop, and we have um, the Azure Managed Service Deployment Tool, and there are potential for other deployment tools as well. Um, Tom, would you mind briefly talking about this rather than doing a huge presentation on this? Um, thanks. Yeah, you can share the some of the details later, I guess, Paul. But um, uh, look, the idea is um, uh, David's. Uh, done an enormous job and terrific expertise with uh and now looks like turning uh, emphasis to on-prem which is fantastic um you can see that i'm i've been very very keen from since arusha to actually do cloud native because i think we can make it very very cost effective we saw this works yesterday uh, are actually heading in that direction i'd like to um, be useful to people as they do that and i'd really like to focus on on doing uh, cost uh, reduction, so I could have, we could have called this cost reduction deployment. Now it needs to draw on the excellent work and all the experience that David has had, but a lot of the time the cloud services do overlap with VMs that we have there as well. So I think there's a this is a real addition to democratizing uh, deployment in the cloud, and it gives people another another option that won't initially be. Um, production it'll take a couple of pis to get there because there's an enormous amount of work that has been done uh, but i think it'll be a great uh, addition to the choices people have uh, even for their dev test they can run really cheap dev test and sandboxes uh, spin up spin down very quickly uh, so i think this adds to the stable and adds to the democratization of the axe breaks down those barriers that's that's it. That's the pitch. Oh, I, 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 one other thing. It overlaps with the next proposal, uh, which I'll well, let you talk, talk about, about that as well. Then we'll have a have a discussion. Uh, okay. So the really cool thing about um, uh, Mojaloop is what it does. The mundane thing about Mojaloop is it's just a bit of software running in Kubernetes. So it turns out that there's a lot of other people run software in kubernetes as well so there's a, a local company that does uh, frameworks and is a for-profit company but they have a they have a very um, significant altruistic focus as well and it's uh, called bizhub you can look at them at bizhub.com.au and so they've actually agreed and in fact are quite excited to help us run the upgrade strategy to actually put in ci city pipelines and create runbooks for updating nodes control kubernetes nodes kubernetes control plane uh database perhaps look at kubernetes operators everything that you'd need for operations that we start to actually make people who are operating modular now the cool thing here is that it's really aligned because they have customers running their own modular stuff so there's a lot of self-interest for BizHub. they want to actually have these things for the customers uh that they've got and they're more than happy to join. In fact, they're keen to join, sign the contribution agreement and start committing uh, their resources to this community. They'll take back their stuff and apply it to their software running for their customers. So, um, and that works very, very much with the uh, previous proposal, which is a new um, deployment tool, because that would be the, the, the cloud na native uh, approach that we would initially uh, deploy the operations to. And V15, V15, big call out to Sam, uh, Miguel, and, and I had some contributions in there as well. We separated out those services. So now this becomes so much cleaner. And so there's almost like there's a plan coming together here. That's it, Paul. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone want to comment on either of those before we move on? Yeah, uh, Paul, this is David Fry. Um, yeah, hey, Paul. Uh, so I, I have a little bit of uh, concern about the language around the alternative multi-cloud deployment tool. Um, I think as we talked about briefly, the IAC uh, cloud agnostic features were brought into the main branch. And the idea was that that would support uh, building your own or using a managed uh, Kubernetes from any vendor uh, or on-prem in, in the same approach. Uh, what, what I'm hearing is that we want an that, that Tom is proposing an alternative 
to uh, deploy into uh, a managed cloud provider. And I don't, I don't see the value of having multiple uh, ways to do deployments unless there's some uh, overriding reason why it makes sense. Um, so the, in, as a part of the, the on-prem work, the proposal for the actual control of the deployments um, includes work to completely divorce that from AWS and build a tool that is actually uh, on-prem uh, cloud vendor specific or uh, managed Kubernetes uh, specific way to deploy Mojulu. Um, so that would be my counter argument to this uh, proposal is to continue down the work that we have and uh, modify it and improve it along the way in order to address uh, the needs that uh, Tom has rightly pointed out. We don't have a managed Kubernetes uh, version of the cloud agnostic code, but I've been proposing that we have contributors come and, and bring that uh, to the table so that we can uh, share it to the rest, the rest of the community. Thanks. Uh, I, I definitely take on board what you're saying, David, and the IEC has been our savior over the last couple of years, completely. Um, all well, can I can I add something? This yeah, is, this is Peter, sorry. Yeah, I, I think that the main focus of this is not necessarily to overlap the same space. This is much more about native uh, cloud in the sense of uh, leveraging managed services to bring the cost down um, by making sure that we can use everything that's uh, provided by the cloud operators. I know that this is not exactly the, uh, um, it, it doesn't cover everything, but the point here is that managed services reduce a lot the complexity of operating. Um, so maybe there's space for that um, um, deployment mechanism, which is gonna facilitate things a lot. So the, the, the point is not so much the, to, to, to compete with IAC, is to complement IAC with a strategy that uses native services, native cloud services and managed services, because those will remove all of the complexity of managing everything that's not specific to Modulup. And I think that's a key important aspect. If we can have managed Kubernetes, managed databases, managed Kafka, managed everything, that means that anyone that tries to operate a, a, a Modulup switch on the cloud will only have to worry about the Modulup specific part and not mm -hmm. anything else. And that not only brings costs down in terms of infrastructure, so in terms of operation, it also speeds up the operation in terms of people, management, resources, and all of those things. So this is, please don't see this as competing. I think this is complementary. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we need to be more, we have to be more specific because as I pointed out in a very rapid presentation yesterday, we already have places in the code for uh, actually specifying uh, managed services for the databases as opposed to building your own. And and so I, again, I'm gonna repeat myself. I think that using the existing IAC or some variant of it and incorporating the different modes that people use in order to deploy is the way forward as opposed to cutting some new um, tool out. So maybe there's some, language uh, polishing that needs to happen on, on this proposal uh, because I see it, the cloud agnostic part, uh, the creating Kubernetes via managed manage Kubernetes and the use of uh, managed services as all part and parcel of what the IAC's job should be. So that, um, and, and I, a caveat, uh, uh, David, manage, David, I'm manage, manage, uh, manage Kafka is David? expensive. So yes, go ahead. David. Sorry, I'm going to catch up for a second. Um, I'll take a decision. We'll pull this out for discussion in the product council and then bring yeah, it back. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Go ahead. It's going to be discussed in the product council next week. It's it's our it's our primary I item. Hello. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. Sorry, I thought I heard somebody discussing it. Now we we don't have time for an in-depth discussion. There is, there is a two-hour session that is that is reserved for this. Um, sorry, some I could, somebody speaking. I don't know. I I think it's somebody unmuted on Zoom. Maybe. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, uh, there's a two-hour session next week to discuss um, uh, uh, proposals from today, and that's where this should go from now. Um, we can expand on it further um, at that time. Um, I suggest we leave that for now.
and we move on and perhaps we should go for a break now. Simeon.